Okay, so if we come again to this guy, uh, remember it's a rod and it's uh, the, this uh, pivot point, this axis of rotation is off center. And we saw previously that F1 was larger than F2 and R2 is larger than F1. And it's being held up by this contact force, okay? Such that your acceleration in the Y is equal to zero. Um, what we saw before is that if we said what is the uh, the textbook hasn't really given us th the proper equation yet but if we're adding up what is the sum of the torques of all the torques what's the sum about this point then what is it we're going to say that because we've chosen um, we've chosen counterclockwise as positive then we're going to have plus uh, let's do it let's do it this way plus r1 f1 okay minus r2 f2 and we remember that this was in equilibrium it was balanced all right so that means that this was equal to 0 the sum of the torques was equal to 0 now the question is, what happens if you choose this point as your point of rotation? Okay? So this is, a uh, let's call this A. This was about point A. What if you do this, try this exercise, but about point B? Well, now you're going to have, well, first of all, come back here. Why did we not include this contact force in our sum of torques? The reason we didn't include this contact force, it's a definite force acting on this object. It is because its, um, its mo moment arm or its lever arm R parallel was zero because this force was passing right through this point of rotation. So its lever arm was zero, and therefore it doesn't apply a torque to this point A. Okay, now let's consider point B. Um, will this guy cause a torque? No, because its lever arm is zero, the force, the line of action of the force is passing right through this point of rotation, and so its R parallel I mean perpendicular, its lever arm is zero. However, in this new case, this guy's lever arm is no longer zero. And so we're going to have, and remember, plus FCPR. I keep putting the force first. I, there, it's actually no problem, but I just want to be consistent. Okay, so plus F. Uh, <laughs> I did it again. R1 uh, FPR. So R1 is the lever arm times that force minus um, because this force is now acting in a count in a clockwise direction minus R2 plus R1. Does that make sense? This guy times uh, times f2 this guy the this guy's new lever arm is this entire distance so you have to add r1 plus r2 that's the entire lever arm okay and we know that this should equal zero because it's it's still in equilibrium however what is this guy what is f uh, this this fpr well, if you look, if you say sum the forces in the y direction, and we know that the acceleration in the y direction is zero, then we can say that F contact PR is equal to F1 plus F2. This upward force is balanced by the two downward forces. Okay? So now if you take this and you plug this in, you're going to get R1, F1 plus F2, minus R2 
1 plus R2, F2 equals 0. And if you wave your magic wand, you will see that this equals R1, F1 minus R2, F2. It is the same as this. Okay? So the conclusion here, the textbook gives us a nice conclusion. If my computer will just wake up. Is that for a... Well, let's first look here. It says the sum of the torques about the left end, right? The left end... Uh, is zero just like the sum of the torques about the pivot. Okay, so it says you can repeat the calculation for the torques about the right end of the rod or any other point, any other point, and each time you will find that the sum of the torques is zero. So any point that you add up, you do the sum of the torques, you will get, you should get the the same answer because there's no um, there's no change in your angular momentum. Okay, so this is the conclusion, is that for a stationary object, the sum of the torques is zero, which makes sense. Okay? So that is why we could add up the torques, sum up the torques about this point on this point, and you can sum up the torques about this point, and you should get the same answer, and it is... Um, it is equal to zero. All right.